Hi, everybody. It's Dina from Bennington Museum. And it's Linda from Bennington Free Library. And this is Museum ABCs. This month for Museum ABCs, we're talking about our feathered friends, the birds. Winter can be a tough time if you're a bird because there's not as much food around to eat, but we humans can help out um, by putting bird seed out and other things to help the birds get through the long winter. And in this month's Museum ABCs, Linda's gonna share a story about some bird. And we have some special activity bags that you can pick up at the Bennington Free Library or at the Bennington Museum during either location's regular hours. And inside the activity bag, we have some treats for you. We have um, a couple of different kinds of bird feeders that you can make at home and a little bird house that you can decorate for your feathered friends as well. Everything's right there in the bag. And the library is open Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday for takeout from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. How about the museum, Dina? The museum is open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday from 10 to 4 until December 31st. After that, we're closed for a while. So come get your bag before December 31st. Okay, and we have lots of bags, but when supplies run out, that's it. <laughs> so Linda. For the next takeout or for the next um, Museum ABCs. Museum ABCs, which is gonna be in February, right? Yes. We take the month of January off, but we'll come back in February with something fun and exciting for you. So Linda, do you have a book to share with us today? I do. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. I'm going to turn my video off so everyone can see you and you can read the story to us. Thanks. See you later. This book is called How to Find a Bird, written by Jennifer Ward, illustrated by Diana Sudica. And I love bird watching. I love to look for birds. And this book really gave me some good tips about how to improve my bird watching. I really like the end papers too. There are lots of ways to find a bird. That's the wonderful thing about birds. To find a bird, first you want to blend in. Oh, the great blue heron is really, really hard to find. And move slowly. Oh, look at the quail down at the bottom of the page. Quiet is good too. So quiet you can hear your heartbeat. Shh. The tundra swan are sleeping. Don't just look up to find a bird. Look down low to the ground where some birds forage, seeking things hiding in the earth. And there's a northern flicker. Oh, I've seen those. And a white-throated sparrow. We have lots of sparrows. And I bet you all know what that is. If you said Robin, you were right. And there's a cardinal up here and a barn swallow and an Eastern bluebird. And there is the robin in flight. Look down where some birds sneak snacks. Look down where birds splash. Oh, the water birds love splash. 
There's a ring-billed gull. I see those at the ocean. I bet you do too. And a rosette spoonbill. Lots of wood ducks in our area. And that's a common loon. <gasps> Have you ever gone canoeing and seen a loon swim around your canoe? I have, I have, it's really, it's really something to see. If you take a walk, watch your step. Some birds nest on the ground. Oh my goodness, there's a red knot and a kill deer. We have some of those and a burrowing owl. I've seen lots of owls, but never a burrowing owl. Maybe sometime I'll see one. So don't just look up to find a bird. Sometimes you can find a bird by looking straight ahead. You will have to have a sharp eye. Sharp as an eagle's eye. And do you see the boy with the binoculars? I forgot to bring my binoculars today to show you, but I have a pair at home. Birds are the cleverest blenders of all. At first, you may not see them, but if you wait, if you are still, and if you are quiet, you'll see you are just as clever as a bird. Oh, look at that owl in the tree. Do you see that owl? And, oh, there's an Eastern whippoorwill. I've never seen one, but I definitely have heard them. And a brown creeper. Oh, those were new to our feeder this year. Of course, you can always look up to find a bird too. Oh, look at all those birds flying in the sky. Do you have a favorite? I think mine actually would be a goldfinch. I see finches all the time, all year long. I like that about them. You can look up high in the sky where birds fly. Sometimes when you look up, you'll find birds simply sitting. That's a fun thing to do if you're taking a car ride and especially if you look up and you see birds who are sitting on telephone wires or who are perched in a high tree along a highway. Sometimes that's when I see red-tailed hawks. If you could perch high in the sky, what might you see? Oh my goodness, a murmuration of starlings. If you want to find a bird, don't be tricked. Some birds are stealthy. Oh, there it is. Look at that peregrine fa a falcon. Wait a minute. Where did it go? Was that even a bird? Oh, where did it go? They are tricky, those falcons. Sometimes you don't even need to find a bird. It will find you. And they're morning doves and there are the kids watching them fly near their house and an eastern bluebird. Oh, there is a beautiful little birdhouse. Some birds will announce their presence when they are near. Chickadee dee dee, caw, caw call or announce your presence when they see you. And that's often when you see a blue jay and they see you, they go, jay, jay, jay. They are squawkers. And if you feed them, they will come. That's why we have some special things in your take home bags um, in your museum ABC bags this month. 
you can feed the birds, look inside, and you'll find things that will help you feed the birds. Oh, look at that downy woodpecker. We have lots of those. Red capped chickadees, of course, and cardinals. They're another one of my favorite birds. We have lots of ruby throated hummingbirds that come to our special hummingbird feeders, but they fly away. They fly away when it gets cold and then they're gonna come back. They come back in May and June and then they're here all summer. All you need is a window to find a bird. Some birds can't be found at all unless you read about them. Oh my gosh, a dodo. These birds are extinct, which means that they no longer exist. Kind of sad, huh? There is Carolina parakeet, passenger pigeons, dusky seaside sparrow, and ivory billed woodpecker. These birds are extinct. Can you say that word extinct? But the best way to find a bird if you want to find one is to close your eyes. Say hey, close your eyes everybody. Did you hear that? Did you hear that bird? There they are, they're making their wonderful calls. Honk, honk, honk. Witch a dee, witch a dee. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Giddy, giddy, giddy. Who cooks for you? That's the wonderful thing about birds. Oh, look at that beautiful whooping crane. Those are so beautiful. And at the end of this wonderful book, it tells you how you, we can all be bird watchers and things that we can look for, field marks, beak color, eyebrow, stripe, eye line, eye ring, throat patch, and wing bars. That will help you in your identification. And one of the things that's coming up really soon is the Audubon Christmas bird count. And Christmas is coming up really soon, isn't it? The Christmas bird count starts uh, December 14th and it goes to January 5th. And you sign up online and you could be like a citizen scientist and go out and count the birds and then report it to Audubon and they put all those numbers together. And every year they report their Christmas bird count. So you can even go on their website, which is really fabulous. And you can look at the bird counts that have happened every year from before I even I was born. So think about doing that and think about getting out and watching and listening, and hopefully feeding the birds. Here we go, those wonderful end papers again. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, you have. You I've got are. some binoculars right here at my desk in my home office where I live. On one side of our house, we have um, a, a big cornfield and so on this side of the house, we keep a pair of binoculars so that we can watch the kinds of birds that like to live near the fields and the meadows. And on the other side of our house, we have um, a forest and a hill. And so we keep binoculars over there so we can look for the birds that prefer to live near the woods. So we've got a great spot for watching birds, but no matter where you live, I will bet you there are birds around and you can watch for birds out your window or when you're outside and you'll find some. I'm sure of it. 
Linda, you have some other great books there about birds that, that people can take out of the library? I do, and let me show you. Remember we were talking about do, being a citizen scientist and doing the Christmas bird count through Audubon? This book gives you more ideas about how to be a citizen scientist. And it's be, it says, be a part of scientific discovery from your own backyard. It is by Lori Griffin Burns. This one is really good. It is a Kids Can Do It book about bird feeders. And there are all kinds of bird feeders for you to make and lots of ideas for you to make a simple bird feeder and put it up in your backyard. And most of the materials they suggest are recycled materials. My first nature activity book also has some ideas about making bird feeders. And this is one of my faves. It's called What's That? bird, a beginner's guide to backyard birding, getting to know the birds around you coast to coast. And it is just filled with great photos and great ideas. And it's published by Story Publications, which is located in North Adams. So it's one of our neighbors. They publish wonderful books. Look up Bird Watching in Your Own Backyard by Annette LeBlanc Kate. I love her style of illustration and her funny way of writing. You'll get a laugh <laughs> looking up. And I you can find all of these books at the Bennington Free Library, right? You can, and these can be um, put on hold, or you can email us and we'll get them together and check them out to you. And you can come Monday, Wednesday, or Saturday for takeout. Great. And everybody should have their own bird book. This is one that um, we have at the library, but I have a couple at home. How about you, Gina? Oh, yes. We have, um, I bought many years ago, the Autobahn Guide to North American Birds, I think. It's about this mm -hmm. thick. And it's a really fun way to try to figure out what kind of bird I'm looking at. Sometimes what I do is I take a picture of the bird because they don't like to stay still long enough for me to figure out, you know, if they have eye stripes or yellow beaks or orange beaks. So sometimes I take a picture and then I look at it and compare it to the book to figure out what kind of bird it was. Yeah, Just that's a, a great story. way to do it. <laughs> well, well, thank you I, so much for sharing that story with us, Linda. And I just want to remind everyone to come to the museum or to the library to pick up your activity bag so you can get started feeding the birds near your house. And we'll everybody. see you again in February. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.